So the Ukrainian government says that around 20 pro-Russian separatists have been killed in some of the worst clashes in eastern Ukraine since the insurgency began. The clashes came in the town of Mariupol when Ukrainian troops attempted to retake control of a police station. And it happened as Russia's President Putin made his first trip to Crimea since its annexation from Kiev. Western governments described the move as clearly provocative. Our chief correspondent Alex Thompson was in Mariupol today and joins us now from the nearby city of Donetsk. Well, first off, expect the usual wave of condemnation and, frankly, propaganda from all sides after what has happened today. So let's concentrate, um, perhaps, on the indisputable aspect of it, which is simply this. We have not yet seen a military force of this size with the kind of arms and equipment that it had pushed into the center of a city and used. Now, Kiev will absolutely say this was, in its terms, a legitimate military target. But there's no question at all tonight that innocent, unarmed civilians were caught up in that action today and they were shot. So big questions tonight. How will the opposition respond to that if they do respond? And is this a general escalation of the conflict? Before my report tonight, a quick warning, I should say. There are some images in this uh, video which some of you may find disturbing. The Ukrainian forces knew what they wanted and they came in force. The first time we've seen anything like this. Their assault on Mariupol's police station sustained. Rocket-propelled grenades fired in city centre streets. Shooting where yesterday people were shopping. Today, they were just trying to stop it all any way they could. Bodies were soon lying in the streets. How can a man with a broken arm be a fighter, the crowd said. We saw two bodies. Kiev claimed they'd killed 21. Many more injured, of course, as the city centre became a battleground. Ukraine says it's a legitimate military action to evict pro-Russian militias out of buildings they've occupied. Many here say it's nothing more than the action of a fascist regime supported by the West. We live here in our native land. Fascists are coming, occupying the place and pushing us around. their mission completed at the police station, the Ukrainian forces moved out, abuse hurled by locals as they did so. <laughs> Leaving people here building barricades tonight, expecting more. We like uh, uh, independent, independent region, you know, we like the independent, we're not terrorists, we're not Killers or uh, some criminals, we're not criminals, we're honest men. In the regional capital Donetsk, with their old shotguns, Kalashnikovs and cobbled together uniforms, the people's militia, out on the streets. No more masks these days. Armed men, militias walking straight down the main boulevards of one of the biggest cities in the east of Ukraine. And the Ukrainian government can't do anything about that. The Ukrainian government's violent show of force in Mariupol and the opposition armed force on the march in Donetsk. <laughs> Greeted with cheers and flowers from the crowds as they entered the city's Lenin Square. Russia! Russia! Russia, Russia they chant as the speaker reminds them that today, Victory Day, is all about commemorating Russia's victory over fascism 69 years ago. Clearly, for some on the streets, perceived fascism remains unfinished business. Well, let's pick up on that theme. As we say, 69 years since uh, the Soviet Union uh, overthrew uh, Hitler 
fascism and Nazism and that theme of fascism, that perception of it, is still very much alive in the minds of many people here today. But more widely, uh, let's have a look at uh, Vladimir Putin. Red Square in Moscow today, obviously you'd see a long military parade, but it was extended not just um, for reasons of showing off the usual hardware, but because of showing off Russia's self-confidence. That, of course, was never going to be enough for Vladimir Putin today of all days. He hopped on a plane and landed in Sevastopol in the newly annexed Crimea Peninsula, newly annexed, of course, from Ukraine. If it looks like a victory parade, it probably is a victory parade. This was uh, chastised across um, countries in the West. It was described as an escalation by Kiev in the violence and the turbulence in the east of the country. It was described as inappropriate by uh, Mr. Rasmussen, the uh, Secretary General of NATO. Condemnation across the West, of course. Vladimir Putin had none of it. He said, harking back on this historical day, that 69 years ago the Russian people showed steel and steel in their hearts, and that steel is still here today. Well, that was his message. Not a lot of compromise there. Alex Thompson in Donetsk. Thanks.